Okay, let's see what the effect of an external magnetic field would be on an atomic orbit. Um, previously, we, we had looked at um, the effect of an external field on just a current. Now let's see what happens when we apply it to the atom. And so for the atom, um, we have a positive nucleus with a negative electron, which is orbiting around it. Um, so the distance is the radius of the orbit. We'll call that capital R. And it has a tangential velocity to it. And we're going to assume a circular orbit. <clears throat> OK, so if that's the case, then the current is going to be minus the charge divided by the time it takes for one um, circumference, so basically the period. And so that we can write as the distance, which is the circumference divided by the velocity. So the equation for our current is minus e velocity over 2 pi r. Okay, so that means that the orbital angular moment, um, sorry, orbital dipole moment is the current times the area so that's the current times pi r squared. And if you put that together, then the magnetic moment is minus e the velocity over 2 pi r times pi r squared. And so I get minus e v r over 2 pi. Oh, no, sorry, just 2. And this is we're going to call in the z direction. Again, we can choose the direction any way we want because we can orient this atom um, in any direction. So just for simplicity, let's have it oriented in the z direction. Also, um, uh, for simplicity, then let's have the magnetic field pointed in the z direction. So we redraw the picture. That's Z pointing up. <clears throat> and so we said the magnetic moment was going to be pointing up, and the magnetic field is also going to be pointing in the upward direction. Um, so if you think about the forces that are acting upon it, then the forces are the centripetal force and the magnetic force, um, which is basically causing the centripetal motion. The centripetal force is, is essentially just um, uh, Newton's second law. So the mass times the acceleration, and I'll call this the mass of the electron, not to confuse it with m, the dipole moment. So that's m e the velocity squared divided by r. <clears throat> um, and, um, okay, so if we put in the forces, um, then we would have the Coulomb force. So let's, let's include the electric force. So that's charge squared divided by r squared plus the magnetic force, E, V, B, sine 90 degrees because we decided to orient the magnetic field in the perpendicular direction. And all of that is equal to m e v squared over r. Okay. Um, so, uh, okay. So if there was no magnetic force, so let's say there's no magnetic force just to start with. Then I would have 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught e squared over r squared would be equal to m e v squared over r. <coughs> um, if we add in um, the magnetic force, so that would, that would change the velocity. 
So then we're going to write a new velocity, which is basically e v bar times b, which is equal to um, m e over r v bar squared minus v squared. So basically, the, the v squared is just the velocity from the electric field um, and uh, electric force. Um, so instead of carrying around the 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught e squared over r squared, we're just calling it the centripetal force that you would get from the electric field. <clears throat> okay. Um, well, if I have v bar squared minus v squared, I can, that's the sum of squares. So um, I can rewrite this now as me v bar plus v times v bar minus v. All that's over r. <coughs> um, delta v is v bar minus v. Um, okay, so we're going to assume that um, the sum of them, though, is going to be small. So we'll just call that the velocity of the um, magnetic interaction. <coughs> um, I'm sorry, the velocity of the total interaction. Um, uh, okay. Um, and so that simplifies things a little bit because now E V bar B is approximately M E over R V bar delta V. So this approximation allows us to cancel the um, V bars and so we're left with a change in velocity which is equal to E B R divided by the mass of the electron. So the change in the orbital speed means um, that uh, the change in the magnetic moment would be minus one half e delta v r in the z direction. So we just replaced um, v with delta v. Um, and, uh, okay, so now if we plug in for delta V from this equation, plug that in for delta V, and what you get is a change in the magnetic moment of minus one-half E squared R squared over the mass electron times the magnetic field. Um, and or, since the magnetic field is in the z direction, we can write this thing, write this now as minus one half e squared r squared over the mass electron times the magnetic field. Okay. Um, so you notice now that we have a minus sign in there, and so that minus sign um, is related, it basically saying that the change in the magnetic dipole moment um, is in the opposite direction as the magnetic field. So delta M is now pointing the opposite direction of B. So that means it's anti-parallel. And it means now that, if I can get this on the page, we have diamagnetism. <clears throat> so it's interesting that the spinning of the electron um, it is related to um, uh, paramagnetism so the electron spin and diamagnetism is related to the electrons orbit 
<clears throat> um, so what do I mean by electron spin? Well, before we just, if you think of the electron as a little loop, as a current loop spinning around, then you can think of the electron as basically revolving on an axis, like the Earth revolves around an axis as it orbits the sun. So the paramagnetism is due to the rotation of the electron and the diamagnetism is due to the orbital motion, the revolving of the electron around the nucleus. Okay, um, so there's these two actions now um, that we have. We have um, basically two sets of motions for the charge. The electron can either spin on its axis or it can rotate, uh, revolve, sorry, around um, a central axis. And those two um, rotations, um, basically those two velocities mean we've kind of mocked up a current and that current now interacts with the external magnetic field. And the interesting thing is they interact in opposite manners. <clears throat> um, so now this is a very simplistic um, derivation and so I really should list the assumptions that were made because these will probably come up later if we try and do something more realistic. Um, and basically the first assumption was that it was a circular orbit. <clears throat> um, so if it was elliptical or something like that, then it would change. Um, not too much, but there would be a change. Um, so where's my list? Okay. So a circular orbit. Um, okay. Uh, the orbit maintains its shape and um, the electron orbits in only the And the electron orbits in only one direction. Because <clears throat> um, okay, so it maintains its shape. So if it didn't, if it if it, if the orbit expanded or contracted or looped around, then it would be much more complicated. Um, but the interesting thing is the, the the third point is that we're only considering the electron to orbit in one direction. So it seems kind of arbitrary. Um, you know, you think if there's just a random distribution, half of the electrons in a sample would orbit clockwise, the other half would be counterclockwise, which would therefore um, change the uh, what we're calling diamagnetism for the orbital um, interaction. And so in the end, what's going to happen is we pretty much run up against the um, the limit of classical um, magnetostatics. Um, what we'll find out in later courses, like quantum mechanics, is that there's an entirely different description of the um, diamagnetic and paramagnetic um, interactions. They, they, they can still be interpreted the same way, as in the magnetic field is either parallel or anti-parallel to the magnetic moment, but what the magnetic moment actually is um, changes. Um, that you know, it, it's it's it is just an assumption that the electron is a little um, point particle that now orbits in a circular path like a solar system around the nucleus. Um, but um, I think this is good enough to kind of show the point that. We have two magnetic um, phenomena in atoms, the paramagnetic and the diamagnetic, and they're related to specific um, characteristics of the electron in the atom. <clears throat>